Red Bull gives you wings. Among the richest humans on the planet when he died, Red Bull founder Chelio Uvidia was a quiet to the point of reclusive Thai entrepreneur who preferred duck farming to the trappings of wealth. And since the devout Buddhist death in 2012, 11 of his family members have inherited his vast fortune, which Bloomberg estimates to be 22 billion. Today we will tell you about, from selling ducks to billionaire, who are the Red Bull founders? 6. Chileo Uvidia, billionaire co-founder of Red Bull. Who would have thought the world-famous Red Bull brand was actually the brainchild of a Thai businessman? Uvidia was born to a poor Thai Chinese family that raised ducks and traded fruit in central Thailand. Despite little education, he had a strong interest in chemistry and learnt it in a day, without ever giving up until he managed to land a job as an antibiotic salesman, but later quit the job to start his own pharmaceutical company, TC Pharmaceuticals, in the early 1960s. He started using his knowledge in chemistry and curiosity to innovate for producing antibiotics. However, upon recalling in the early years of his youth, working as a blue-collar worker going through endless work nights, a sudden jolt of divine inspiration was bestowed upon him to create a tonic to give life to himself and his peers. Uvidia decided to experiment with beverages by loading them with caffeine and by making trials with different combinations. One such trial was about adding an amino acid called taurine, which, when mixed with caffeine, is said to improve mental performance and help regulate the level of water and minerals in the blood. After countless failed attempts, he finally arrived with the ultimate cocktail recipe in 1976, which became today's well-known energy-boosting beverage, Krating Dang. It quickly became the top-selling energy drink in Thailand within two years. Krating Dang's path to the international market began when Dietrich Mateschitz, an Austrian sales representative working for German markets, discovered that this drink cured the jet lag he experienced while on his frequent flights around the world. It amazed him so much that he decided to enter into a partnership with Uvidia in 1984 and launched an international version named Red Bull. Their terms of work were clear. Uvidia provided the formula and Mateschitz took care of marketing. Each of them put up an investment of $500,000 for 49% of the Red Bull energy drink franchise, with Uvidia's son owning the remaining 2%. Uvidia died in Bangkok on the 17th of March 2012, but his legacy lives on, powering up all those night owls, working hard, and partying harder. 5. Dietrich Mateschitz Career Dietrich Mateschitz's first job was at Unilever, where he marketed detergents. Dietrich Mateschitz thus launched his version of the canned energy-boosting drink, which is now widely popular as Red Bull. Moreover, in its formative years, there was no existing market for energy drinks, but Dietrich Mateschitz tapped the opportunity to launch a one-of-a-kind product. 4. Joining Hands Forty years ago, Red Bull's co-founder did something almost no startup ever considers. Today, he's worth $25 billion. Because sometimes creating a new business, much less a new category, means creating something no one has ever experienced before. Who knows, if things go extraordinarily well, you could someday build a global company. The co-founders decide an energy drink shouldn't taste familiar or even necessarily good. According to Bob Holmes' book, Flavor, The Science of Our Most Neglected Sense, instead of concocting an artificial flavor designed to imitate natural flavors, Red Bull was created with a fantasy flavor made intentionally unbalanced to give the impression of vigor, even agitation. It worked. Try to describe what the original Red Bull flavor tastes like. Eventually, you'll give up and say, uh, it tastes like a Red Bull. Even so, risky move. A degree of familiarity can help attract initial customers to new products. Red Bull Raspberry Mango might have appealed to people who like raspberries or mango, but familiarity doesn't create new product categories. Start with familiar flavors and customers who would have had to have liked those flavors, cranberry, lime, and blueberry. Those flavors would have to come later. First, customers needed to embrace the idea of an energy drink, which to Mattachitz and Uvidia meant Red Bull needed to taste like nothing customers had tasted before. 
Introduce a familiar flavor first, and energy drink might never have caught on. Once hooked, then familiar flavors could be introduced. It worked. Even though products like Monster, Bang, Rockstar, Atel have carved out their own market share, play the word association game with energy drink and your first response will probably be Red Bull. Granted, not just because the company basically created the market, Red Bull also spends between a fourth and a third of its revenue on marketing. As a result, in 2021 alone, the company sold more than 9 billion cans and generated over 6.5 billion in revenue. As for Mattishitz, he's turned his original $500,000 investment into a net worth of around $25 billion. While Chalio Uvidia passed away, his son Chalerm's net worth is approximately $20 billion. Familiar is usually safer. Countless successful businesses have been built by providing incrementally better quality, price, service, etc. But if you hope to create something new, and especially if you hope to create a new market, then what you provide needs to actually be new. 3. Early Days of Red Bull Within 30 years of establishment, Red Bull currently enjoys the highest market share in energy drinks with 6.302 billion cans sold in the year 2017. Aimed to keep truck driver and factory workers awake for long shifts, Kratzing Dang has come all the way what we know today as Red Bull. It was during 1976 Chalio Uvidia founder of TC Pharmaceuticals in Thailand introduced an energy drink called Kratzing Dang, which means Red Guar in English. The energy drink was sold in bottles bearing an image of two Red Bulls on the label. It was success among the working class consumer. Sponsorship of boxing matches and sport events helped to grow its brand presence in local market. 3. The Turning Point of Red Bull The ingredients were modified to suit local taste, and the first Red Bull canned drinks were on market in Austria in 1987. The sweetness of original Thai beverage was reduced slightly, and carbonation was added. The ingredients in a can of Red Bull also vary slightly from one country to the next, based on the food safety laws of that country. 1. Expansion of Red Bull In 1992, it started to export to Hungary and Slovenia. Red Bull was introduced in Germany and the United Kingdom in 1994. Despite a slow start, the company kept moving and expanded to US in 1997, then became a huge success and was able to enjoy 75% market share of American energy drinks. The company promoted with the slogan, Red Bull Gives You Wings. Red Bull has very successfully used an advertising strategy with an emphasis on buzz or viral marketing and word of mouth. In the process, Red Bull also gained some criticism related to its marketing tactics using extreme sports and its health risks. However, the European Food Safety Authority EFSA, and similar agencies in other parts of the world have ruled that the levels of caffeine, taurine, and, and glucuronolactone used in Red Bull and competing energy drinks are safe. The company established itself in racing circuits, football clubs, and in a number of extreme sports. They sponsored events and bought teams and franchises. Red Bull Cliff Diving Championships, Red Bull Air Race, Red Bull Drifting Championships, and the Red Bull Soapbox Race. Do let us know if you want more information about them. Thanks for watching.